This week's button, Hankler fish. This is how I remember to approach this topic with empathy, compassion, intelligence, and honesty as best as I can. Just like Hank or John would on Vlogbrothers. I'm Johnny. And it's time for American politics. Ugh, why am I even doing this? Okay, if I haven't already offended my American coworkers, friends, family, and compatriots out there, the reason why I might be hesitant about speaking to and about American politics is that it's a little shrill right now. And I don't want to go all pointing fingers, guy. It is really hard to talk about American politics without seeming like you're embroiled in on a side or part of the other guys that are going to ruin everything for everyone. So you can see why I'm a little hesitant. But when I started this vlog thing, one of the topics that I really wanted to cover was, in fact, society and culture. But since it's my video blog, it'll be about neuroscience, music production, society and culture. See? That John I said it must be true. I gotta ask you a couple of questions before we start. What's more important for your child to have? Respect for their elders or independence? Is it more important for your child to have self-reliance or obedience? Number one. Two. Is it more important for a child to be considerate or well-behaved? And finally, is it more important for your child to have curiosity or good manners? Three or four. Those questions happen to be the best markers as to whether or not you're an authoritarian. Now, I don't mean totalitarianism or meditarianism. What I do mean is an alternate axis of the political spectrum. Like we got the usual like left wing socialist communist nut jobs, right wing capitalist free market rand worshippers. There's more to it than that. There's this vertical axis, and it goes from libertarian, and I mean that in that Chomsky-esque love and freedom kind of way, down to authoritarian. Now, there's an entire Vice article. It's really good and also really long. And this video is kind of a TLDR of that. Links down the doobly-doo. This is particularly topical in the upcoming presidential election because by all accounts, Trump is leading the pack and Trump's message is basically authoritarian. Now, authoritarians have a very strong sense of right and wrong. And they're conservative in the small C conservative, not liking change kind of way. Now, one of the craziest things to come out of this study is that authoritarians are not fitting along the right end or left end of the spectrum very well. So right or left is not necessarily a great indicator as to whether or not you're an authoritarian. What is the indicator and almost the primary indicator of whether or not you're an authoritarian is how much fear you have. That's the thing. How afraid are you of whatever? And see, that's the trick. You can get people voting in droves if you can get them afraid of something and then point to someone and say, that someone is an enemy, that someone is a subhuman, I can fix the problem with my sure answers, let's do this. So authoritarians are triggered and they're triggered by an act that challenges their safety. Like your friend Walbert could just be like, he's just a dude and he's hanging around. He listens to techno, whatever. And then all of a sudden there's this world event or even personal event that gets his stress hormones a pumping and his amygdala is all working overtime. And that could trigger him into a slide to authoritarianism. Before you know it, he starts thinking that it's a good idea to put boots on the ground and solve this problem once and for all. So while I'm talking about authoritarians, it's important to realize that this is not a move to other those people that would vote Trump. This is something to point to a tendency that ultimately we all have. But it's also a plea to examine and explore this idea a little bit more because we need to wind it back and become a society that 
is built on mutual respect, just simple baseline respect for one another. The only answer I have right now is from my friend Chelsea. A long time ago, she wrote this out to me, and it really hit home. There is no enemy anywhere. Now, that's not to say there aren't people that are willing to use deadly force to get what they want. That's not to say that there aren't people that can and will hurt you. But the second you make them an enemy is the second that you dehumanize them and you become as bad as they are. And I think that is the important thing to realize. Yes, the Middle East is fucked right now and needs to be contended with. But just dropping more bombs and just putting boots on the ground, is that going to solve the problem? There's a big problem with police brutality right now. But just calling all cops pigs, saying shit like there's no such thing as a good cop, does not fix the problem. All right, I hope I've opened your eyes a little bit. And remember, kids, don't dehumanize. Rehumanize. It's fun.